First question, uh, Mark left off on last segment talking about the confidence of the Lakers. I'm kind of skeptical mm-hmm. because I want something. I want to see kind of like a gladiator fear where, like, it should be a total slaughter. You shouldn't leave room for the Rockets or even the Oklahoma City Thunder to come back. But where do you stand with the confidence of the Lakers? Do you trust them or do you not? Not really. I mean, this is a soft part of the schedule right now, right? So they're playing Oklahoma twice, Cleveland, Houston twice. Uh, I'm kind of interested to see how they do during their uh, five-game road trip. I think they play the Bucks and Celtics. But I think that's going to be a good test for them. And maybe if they're successful, then I'll be more confident. Yeah. So you're saying I'm, pr- I'm probably going to be heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I, I honestly think when it comes to the road trip, that will be the true test. And hopefully they can wake up. And how do you feel about some of the players that are absent right now? I mean, we haven't seen Kendrick Nunn. We haven't really seen Wayne Ellington. Um, hopefully we get Taylor Horton Tucker back. So do you think that will make an improvement to the Lakers and their play? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think they're playing okay right now, but once they get, you know, especially THT, I'm expecting him to make a big jump on defense, and then Nunn's a great player. And then I'm not sure about Ellington, if he's even going to have a spot in the rotation, right? Because I think Reeves has kind of taken his spot mm-hmm. due to injuries, but... Yeah, I think uh, once the Lakers are healthy, they should be fine. Yeah, and uh, I know you just wrote about Carmelo Anthony. Mark and I were talking about him. Um, I I mean, it's trippy to see not just Carmelo Anthony in year 19 as a Laker, but just even to see him in the purple and gold. Like, how do you feel about Carmelo Anthony so far playing for the Lakers? I mean, I've wanted him since 2014. I, I always tweeted Carmelo Anthony, future Laker. I think it actually started with him. And uh, yeah, really? it's kind of weird to see a player player that can actually make threes, you know? Yeah. He's sh- shooting 52% so far, and it's kind of weird to see that like, because, I mean, most shooters that come to the Lakers, man, they can't, they can't make anything. Now, do you think there's any specific reason, like, are they distracted or just don't, they don't fit? Like, I mean, why do, like, some of these three-pointed players that kind of, like, get, you know, they're... The three-pointing abilities kind of diminish for some reason when they're in Laker colors. I think it might be like the celebrities and attention, but also I think it might be the arena lights. I think that's possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of felt as if opening night with Russell Westbrook, he was kind of starstruck, but how do you feel? I know you just wrote about him too again on uh, recently. Like, Do you feel as if Russell Westbrook is going to start turning the ball over less, or do you think this is just who he is? I think it's just who he is. I mean, he takes a lot of risks, right? And I think with uh, the new small ball lineup, obviously there's more space for him to operate, so I, I think it'll help. I think when they had um, DeAndre starting, it clogged up the lane. So, I mean, I think they're uh, doing the small ball lineup tonight again, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, hopefully uh, they're able to turn around. We're on the phone right now with Dan Duong Dao of lakeshow.com. Go ahead and give him a follow on Twitter, at Duong Dao, uh, Dan Duong Dao. So that's D-U-A-N-G-D-A-O. And then also on lakeshow.com. So just go ahead and follow him on Twitter. Um, I'm not sure how you feel about um, the rest of the division right now. I mean, the Clippers somehow, some way are still staying relevant, but with the Phoenix Suns, I'm like, okay, they're kind of showing now that they are more like the team that they were when they made the NBA Finals. Granted, they still had an easy run in the playoffs, but I think that did give them a bolster of confidence heading into this season. Do you think the Lakers are having a threat so far when it comes to the Pacific Division? Yeah, in the Pacific Division, I think uh, the Suns are the favorites in the West right now. Uh, they play together a little bit longer, and then I think they just fit well. And then I do think uh, if it's not the Lakers by the end of the season, it's probably the Suns in the finals. Oh, no, I don't like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, yeah, sorry, Mark is busy right now in Twitter jail. I know he doesn't want to chime in as much as... <laughs> oh, no, I... Well, I, I I just uh, I don't want that to happen, but I know it, it's it's a strong possibility because I remember when we uh, we had a tarot card reader and they said that uh, 
that our, well, what was it, uh, Zach, that like our biggest threat would be somewhere in the desert or something like that? Yeah, she predicted when we had a tarot card reader, she said that it was coming somewhere from the southwest portion of uh, America. And we were like, all right, is she talking about Texas? And then she was like, I'm getting a desert feel. I'm like, oh, she's talking about Phoenix. Oh, man. So you just, so been crazy, though. Well. She's been pretty <laughs> accurate, right? Yeah, no, she's pretty accurate. I... I that's why I thought that every life decision I've had is because of the tarot cards. So, <laughs> yeah. So you hear that, ladies? Don't date Zach, or else he'll ask you what time you were born and whatever star map. Well, I was about to say, like, uh, that's why I'm still single is because I do the tarot card, and every time it flips, it's <laughs> like none of the girls are right for me. <laughs> <laughs> what time were you born? I'm not telling you. I'm not giving you my codes. This is my cheat codes, dude. <laughs> Dan, what time were you born? Uh, oh, man. I think I'm March 13 at 9.35 a.m. Damn. I don't know what that Ooh, means, so, but it sounds good. <laughs> I know what that means. There's still some McDonald's breakfast. I know that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, so, okay, so, I mean, I, I, are you still, so you are a little concerned still, Dan, as far as this Lakers squad? Like, you get, you, I mean, I know it's still the beginning of the week. Got still plenty of basketball left, but... Is there has your confidence grown just a little bit, or does it still remain the same? Uh, like concerns about the team? Is that what you said? Yeah, as far as like you know, as far as them like the ability, I know like we have some threats. Like, because like with this team, I feel like I'm confident enough to be like, okay, cool, we can win a championship with this team. But part of me still is like, okay, can they get it together? So, but little by little, I am getting confident with them. But as Zach mentioned before, you know, we don't have. You know, Ellington playing, none. So we haven't even seen, it, seen us at full strength yet. But with who we have right now, does that give you any confidence as far as, like, okay, maybe, you know, things will be a little bit better than expected? Yeah, I think um, once everyone's healthy, they have a chance, right? They just have to uh, gel together at the right time. And I think one concern I do have is their foot speed. I know, I just feel they're kind of a step behind on defense sometimes. And, like, teams like the Phoenix Suns kind of took advantage of them. But that was, like, an early game, right? The second game of the season? Yeah. Yeah. And that was something where I was willing to let it off the hook because I'm like, all right, like, this Phoenix Suns team, they know each other because they played with each other last year. This Lakers team is kind of filling each other out. But, I mean, you want a filling out process against Oklahoma City – and also get the W, you know, like that's the type of thing that I was upset about. But I know you also wrote about small ball. Um, Anthony Davis did start in place with Dwight Howard, who was out the other night. And Anthony Davis, I mean, like I really like Anthony Davis at the five. I know it's not going to be a whole um, topic of it for like continuing on in the rest of the season. But how does Anthony Davis fit with the small ball look in this Lakers squad? I think it's his uh, best position, obviously. Um, he can just kind of stretch the floor, create space for Westbrook and LeBron. And then defensively, I mean, he can switch to anyone. And I think it just makes the Lakers more dynamic. And I think it depends on matchups as well, right? If they're playing someone like MB, then probably Dwight or DeAndre is fine. But for the most part, I think uh, it's uh, AD at the five. And then I think Ariza starts once he's healthy as well, to kind of make them not not entirely small ball, but, you know, a bigger team. Mm -hmm. And when you mentioned Joel and B, the first name that popped in my head was Andre Drummond, because I'm kind of low sour (laughs) about how well he's performing. (laughs) Um, Because Andre Drummond, like, let me share the stats of what he's done so far this season. Um, He is averaging, oh, it's only seven points a game. But, like, there are some games where he, like, flourishes, like, 15 points or something, and he's grabbing 15 boards as well. What? Yeah, and so I'm just like, (laughs) it kind of, like, maybe the stats aren't as good because, again, his season average are, like, seven points a game with 10 rebounds. But when I see those 15 points, 15 rebounds, and then, like, he's shooting well from the free throw line, I'm like, yo, dude, why weren't you like that when you were with me? Like, it feels like a girl that, like, decides to put on makeup, you know? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, well, I like Dwight more than uh, Drummond, but I do get sad when I see Caruso driving. Oh, yeah. That's a tough one. Have you been, with the have you been analogy, right? Yeah. <laughs> have you been watching Caruso play for Chicago? I've watched highlights. Like him dunking and doing, uh, 
I, I know, wait, uh, yeah, because yeah, he just dunked, like, not too long ago. I know he dunks, but, like, it was, like, a, one of those, like, highlight reel spectacular dunks, from my understanding. Yeah. Funny how people are giving him, like, his flowers now after he leaves the Lakers. I mean, he's still playing the same way, right? Good defense, dunks, good passes. Yeah, that's a good point. Think... Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, that's a good point. It just, well, it kind of just shows how much, like, we're hated, I guess, as, you know, as the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh... I feel like no matter who we have on our team, they're always going to just, you know, be negative about. Uh, and then once they leave, they're like, oh, hey, this guy's really good. Like, yeah, no duh. Like, we've been saying that since, like, day one. <laughs> so like... I'm glad that the world sees Caruso as, you know, for what we've always known. But, no, it does, it does suck. It's like, hey, you know, the, you know our, our, our ex-hot chick is, you know, begging this other team. Yeah. That's really good. That's getting good. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> Eleven years ago, it was like, hey, have you heard of this Trevor Reza guy? He's like, yeah, dude. He won a ring. All right. <laughs> Lay off of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so you guys see a little tweet about, um, I think someone tweeted, like, uh, if the Lakers are going to have any fans after LeBron retires. Oh, gosh. Say that again? Wait, what? <laughs> I think it was someone on Twitter. They said that they asked the question of, are the Lakers going to have any fans once Le- LeBron retires? Oh, my God. He, that's a, that's, that, should put, that should have put them in Twitter jail, if anything. Because, I mean, come on. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the most dumb thing I've ever heard that someone would actually... Obviously, they don't pay attention, but that's the Internet. Probably someone that's 16 years old, you know, if that, some kid... You know, I was trying out Bulls. What was that one account? Bulls only or whatever exactly you ate? Oh, geez. Um, Bulls on deck or something like there that. There you go. Bulls got yeah, next. Uh, like that. Yeah, Bulls don't Bulls give him attention. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? For once, I actually agree with him because I do like the Bulls. So, like, I'll as long as he doesn't talk about James Harden, we're good. Which is hilarious to see him uh, be such a trash player. Have you been, have you been watching... Uh, uh, James Harden's meltdown, Dan? Yeah. Okay, so last question, actually, because going off of that, Dan, what do you think about the refs letting the players play? Because, I mean, James Harden has only gone to the line double digits in one game so far this season. Do you think this is actually a good thing? Yeah, I love it. It's um, Actually, I hate James Harden. It's the way he plays. Like It's like you're so talented, but you still got to cheat and draw all these fouls, right? So... And I think he's only averaging like 18 points a game now. So I think his free throws dropped by like 10 attempts. So I think it's good for the game. Uh, it's funny when I see players try to draw the foul and they don't call it. Yeah. No, yeah, I love that stuff. Um, go ahead, people. Go ahead and follow him on Twitter, Lakeshow.com. That's Lakeshow.com. This is the writer that you will find on the website, Lakeshow.com. It is Dan Duong Dao. So again, spell his name on Twitter: D A N D U A G D U A N G D A O. So thank you again, Dan. Uh, we'll love to well, have you back you. on Thanks again. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Always a pleasure. And congrats pleasure. on the site. Congrats on the new site. Yes. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care, Lakeshow. guys. Lakeshow.com. Thank you. Lakeshow.com. Thanks, Dan.